Okay, logarithms. These are these ones on the front are easy to find. You take your base three and multiply it till you hit twenty-seven. Nine. Now I'm at twenty-seven. So how many did that take? It took three of them. So x is equal to three. Okay, so now I multiply fours out to, in order to hit sixty-four. So that's sixteen. Now I'm at sixty-four. It took three of them. But because it was 1 over 64, it needs to be to the negative 3, okay? Because of that, it's 1 over. Okay, it's 3. I start them all at 3. There's 9, 27, 81, and 243. Use your calculator. It takes 5 of them, so x is 5. Remember, the logarithm is a power. Okay, so that's 343. The dot is just a spec mark, so I've got 7 times 7 times 7. How many did that take? It took 3. Okay, pretty easy there. Okay, number 5. 7 to the 3x plus 4 power equals 49 to the 2x plus 1 power. So I see that I'm solving for x, and the x is a power, so I circle the power in the base and split it. But I have it on both sides, so I would want to make my glasses here, okay? So, 7 and 49. So I take my smaller base, 7, and then I put it over here. I multiply as many as I can to hit 49. It, there's 49. It takes 2. So we replace 49 with 7 to the second. So I drop my equals. That, that's already a base 7, so I keep that the same to the 3x plus 4 power. The 49 changes into 7 to the second, okay? But then I have to make a parenthesis and put the 2x plus 1 that was there originally. And now the 7s cancel. So on this side, I've got 3x plus 4. Now on the other side, I take 2 times 2x and 2 times 1. you got to distribute the 2 to both of them, and that's 4x plus 2. Okay, my x's are like terms, so let's get them on the same side. So I subtract 4x. You could also subtract 3x. It's not a big deal. So now I get 1x, negative 1x, plus 4 is 2. And then the 4 and the 2 go together, but they need to be on this other side. So I'm minus 4, minus 4, so I get negative 1x, and then negative 2. So now I divide by negative 1, and I now know that x equals 2. Okay, the next problem. I see that x is a power, so I circle the power in its base, and there's no way I'm going to multiply 8s out to 300. It doesn't work, so I need to use my power, which is x, and I set that equal to my log ratio. The 8 has to go in the denominator, and I know what goes on top because there's no number outside here, so I can just put 300. So I take log 300, close it, divided by log 8 and close it, and that's going to be 2.74. Okay, again, x is a power, so I want to circle the power in its base. Okay, it's only on one side, so I can set my power, which is 3x, equal to the log ratio. Base of 7 on bottom, and there's nothing in front here, so I can just put my 18. I don't need to divide, so 3x equals, and I take log 18, close it, divided by log 7, close that, and I got 1.49, but now I need to divide by 3, because my x that I don't know multiplied by 3 is 1.49, so I divide by 3. Okay, 1.49 divided by 3. That gives me 0 0.50 or 0 0.49. You can put either one, okay? Either one's a fine answer. Okay, now on the story problems, you got to pay attention to if you have quarterly, okay? You have $500 in a savings account that's going to earn 2% interest each year compounded quarterly. There's that phrase. How much will the account be worth in 10 years? So I need to find out the worth of the account, so the money. And I'm not going to draw the three boxes because I know I'm going to use the quarterly equation. So our beginning amount is $500.
and then 1 plus your percent, 2 percent, so 0 0.02, not 1.02. The one's right there, okay? Divided by 4 because that's a frequency, and then the 4 is going to go out here as a power, but I also need to know that there's 10 years there, okay? And I don't know the ending amount, so when that's unknown, we're going to use the y variable for that, okay? So first I know 4 times 10 is 40. And since there's no letter in the parentheses, I need to divide and add 1. So 0 0.02 divided by 4 plus 1. 1. 1.005. So I got 500, and now that parentheses turns into 1.005. It's to the 40th power, and then I have Y. Now this letter is all by itself. It's already isolated, so I can just plug that into my calculator on a straight shot. 500 times 1.005 to the 40th power, and I got $610, okay? So 610, so the money I end up with is 610. Okay, number 10. You deposit $800 in an account that pays 3% yearly interest compounded quarterly. How long will it take the account to earn $1,000? Okay, so I'm asking how long. So I must be finding the number of years it takes. Okay, so I've got 800 and then 1. And then my percent is 3%, so 0 0.03, and that needs to be divided by 4. And then my power is 4. And I don't know the years because that's the answer to the problem. So when I don't know that, I use the X variable. And my account ends at 1,000, okay? So again, before I worry about the variable, I can't times here, but I can dang sure divide and add 1 to get rid of that parentheses. So 0 0.03 divided by 4 plus 1. 1. 1.0075, so I have 800 times 1.0075 to the power of 4x equals 1,000. Now you're left with x. The x is a power, so again, we need to circle the power in the base, and I know that 4x, the power, is equal to the log ratio. The 1.0075 goes in the denominator on bottom. Now, I don't know what to put yet because I have this 800 times out here. So we need to divide by 800, and then I divide by 800. So I take 1,000 divided by 800, and I get 1.25. Okay, so whatever that is, I'm going to divide it by 4. But first, log 1.25 divided by log one point. 0075, just like I'm entering in, and I got 30, okay? So then we divide by 4, and 30 divided by 4 is 7.5 years. Okay, then the last story problem we have. You buy a new mountain bike for $200. The bike decreases in value by a constant rate each year. After three years, that bike is now worth $85 because it's going down. Calculate the percent change each year. So I'm finding the percent. Now, you don't see quarterly, so you're not going to use that 4 anywhere. The best way you could do it, the smartest way, is to draw out the boxes, knowing that we have dollars and years. So X is our years, Y is our money. So what is happening every year? Okay. Well, it goes by a constant rate. That means a percent, but you don't know the percent. And it's going down, so it's minus P percent. Okay, so I do the curve. Sorry. So it's a times problem. So there's a beginning amount, and that's going to be multiplied by a percentage known as the growth rate. And since that multiplication is repeated, I use a power of X. Okay, so I know that we start at 200 for my growth rate. I like to take 100, but there's no percent there, so I write 1 minus P, and that's going to be what our growth rate is, so parentheses 1 minus P. 
Okay, so now I write my equation. I've got $200. I will be multiplying by the 1 minus P expression. And that's to the X power equals Y. Well, P's not going anywhere, so I need to replace the X and Y both. So the X is the years, and we know there's three of those. So to the third power. And I know my ending amount's 85. Okay, so I'm solving for P. P is not a power, so we're not going to use logarithms. Okay, P is in a parentheses, so I would probably want to replace it with Q. And then I'll make a box here and put 1 minus P equals, because after I solve for Q, I'm going to put that here. So Q is going to have a 200 in front. It's going to be to the third power, and it's going to equal 85. So I need to use a third root, but first I need to clear the 200. The root should always be the last thing you do. So Q to the third, and I take 85 divided by 200, and that's 0 0.43. And then I need to find a cube root. Okay, that cancels. And again, we're not worried about plus minus here because it's a story problem. So I raise that to the one-third power, and that's going to be 0 0.75. I always like to put a 1 here and box it, and I need to clear the 1, so minus 1. So I have negative 1p. I'll divide by negative 1. 0 0.75 minus 1 is negative 0 0.25. And then I divide by negative 1. And that's going to be 0 0.25, which, of course, is 25%. Try to remember to write 25 there. Okay, then there's a graph problem, okay? And this time the x is a power. So I'm going to forget about that plus 2. I'll go back and minus 2 to all the x's. So if we have an x power, the domain's not restricted like it is on the roots. So we don't have a fraction, so I'm going to go 2, 1, 0, negative 1, negative 2. And then I'm going to go to negative 10 because that's going to tell me something. It's going to tell me the line it never goes past, and that's called your asymptote. Okay, so I'm going to take 2 times 4, hit the power button. First, we're going to put a 2 in. I'm not going to do the plus 2, and then I'm going to minus 6. That's 26. Now I'm going to put 2 times 4 to the first power. I'm not going to plus 2 yet. I'm going to minus 6, and that gives me 2. I'm going to take 2 times 4 to the 0 power. Minus 6 gives me negative 4. 2 times 4 to the negative first power, and then skip over the plus 2 and just minus 6, negative 5.5. So 2 times 4 to the negative second power, minus 6, is negative 5.88. And now I'm not actually going to graph this, but it's going to tell me the line I get close to but never actually cross. So I'm going to take 2. 2 times 4 to the negative 10 power, minus 6, negative 5.99. So I'm pretty sure the line I never get past is negative 6. Okay? So i got to make it to 26. So let's go by 5. So 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. And I need to set that asymptote down at negative 6. So it's going to be right here. Remember, it's negative 6, and all points should be on one side. So 226, so 2, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 26. 1, 2, so 1 and then 2 is about right there. 0, negative 4, that's going to be right here. Negative 1, negative 5.5, so that's going to be down here. And all I do is get closer to the line, but I'm never going to cross negative 6. No matter what I put in for x, that's impossible. So again, all I do is get closer that way, and then we have two arrows. It always looks like a hook shape.